And after a nationwide call to defund police, our local police department's budgets are now under the microscope. And tonight, the Baltimore City Office of the Inspector General released another report on overtime spending by the Baltimore Police Department that raised a lot of eyebrows about how your tax dollars are being spent. WMER 2 News' Eddie Kadem is live with Baltimore City Police Headquarters tonight. Eddie, you sat in as the Baltimore City Council grilled the leaders of the police department about uh, overtime spending. Yeah, good evening, Kelly and Jamie. This report focused on an officer who lost his right to carry a gun or make an arrest nearly 30 years ago because he was all involved in an officer involved shooting when he shot a teen in 1993. Despite those rights being suspended since 1994, he was getting paid as a city police officer. What that means is that he was making around $125,000 yet last year with 30 grand of it coming in overtime. The police budget for fiscal year 2022 is expected to be around $555 million. That's up by more than $25 million from last year. The mayor and police commissioners say getting negligent overtime spending under control is one of their top priorities. It's incumbent that the real controls be instituted and that the department be responsible about the money that they're charging to the police uh, to the uh, Baltimore taxpayer. On Wednesday, city council members were asking Baltimore Police Department leaders about overtime issues found in reports from the Office of the Inspector General. A gentleman who was on payroll for an extended period of time after having shot a teenager, it was a pretty high profile case. I'm just curious, it would seem that a fairly basic forensic audit of um, payroll and overtime would identify that. The report Councilman Cohen is referencing found an employee was being paid overtime and given all union benefits as an officer despite being stripped of the right to arrest and carry a firearm while working for BPD. Despite that, he made more than $158,000 in overtime since 2016 and got paid around $600,000 over the last five years. The commissioner's chief of staff says they were aware of this situation before the OIG report, but were slowed by legal red tape to address it. The fact of the matter of his permanent status as a, as a suspended member prohibited him from doing anything beyond uh, what an administrative functionary could do. And so the comparative is a fair one of, of a civilian position being able to cover this responsibility, but we're covering that responsibility with a member's salary uh, commensurate with the police officer and, and then authorizing overtime for it, which was widely inappropriate. The OIG found potential waste in this case because the employee's duties could have been performed by a civilian last year for half of the base salary not to mention the extra $32,000 they made in overtime. Baltimore City Police Commissioner Michael Harrison agreed with the findings of the report and notified the employee they were going to be terminated from that role on August 1st. The OIG report says that employee retired. The inspector general also led an investigation of officers double dipping by collecting overtime and vacation pay at the same time. The chief financial officer for the department says that they sent out a department wide email and that they don't anticipate future issues as they switch to a new time card system. And that's one of the great benefits of Workday is we now have this transparency to what's going on um, with our employees and we can get reports that tells us if policies are being complied to and not being complied with. And now it's raining. The uh, city council was asking the police department about this task force that they're planning to put into place for uh, overtime spending. And the police department says that it will be made up of members of the department and people from outside of the department. And the city council wanted to meet with that task force once they're formed. Live in downtown Baltimore, Eddie Kadem, WMAR 2 News.